If you're new to cruising and want to know about planning and what you need to do in preparation for a cruise, then this is the video for you. Hi, we're Alison and Ian, and welcome to our video about planning for a cruise. But before we start, if you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing. Over 96% of our viewers aren't currently subscribed. Yeah, I know. And it doesn't cost you a thing. So please do consider it as it will help us go and help the channel immensely. Okay then, Alison, what is our first tip for the viewers? Okay, so the first tip is quite obvious, and that is you need to do your research. Before you actually go and book your cruise, there's so many things you need to take into account. The first being your budget. So it's not only the price of the cruise you need to think about, but any extras such as the flight cost to get to the cruise, hotel stays before and after, any excursions, your drinks, your insurance, it all adds up. So it's not just the cost of the cruise itself you need to think about. Okay, so once we people have considered a budget, then what wouldn't be the next thing you'd suggest? I would say it's the destination. So where is it you want to cruise to? So what are you wanting out of it? Do you want the sun? Do you want adventure? Do you want just to relax? Um, lots of things you need to think about city cruise you know, where is it you want to go in the world and having done your destination then I guess you're gonna have to think about what type of cruise line exactly now there's so many cruise lines out there so think about who is traveling and what their needs might be so if you've got children teenagers with you you might want to think of cruise lines such as um, Royal Caribbean Norwegian where they've got more fun things to do if you want something very formal, you might want to think of a cruise line such as Cunard. But if you want something a little bit, bit more informal and relaxed, maybe P&O, Celebrity, mm. Princess. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and other things to consider with regards to doing research, I guess, would be about cabins. Absolutely. Right. So once you know the cruise ship you want to go on, then think about the cabin choice. So the most cheapest cabin is an inside and then you, if you want a, a view of the wind outside in a window, that will be a, a sea view cabin. And then moving up from there, if you want to actually sit outside in your own space, it will be a balcony cabin. Then you've got your suite, so various different sizes um, and perks you can get with the suite, such as um, early embarkation, you might have a speciality restaurant for your meals, you might get bubbly flowers, chocolates, canapes, that sort of thing. Okay, so... One of the first things you said was talking about a budget. Would there be any cabin location that would help keep within a budget? Or? Absolutely. So you've got, a, you've got a few options here. So if you don't mind where you are on the cruise ship and you just want the cheapest fare, you go for a guaranteed cabin. Um, so each, each type of cabin, you can have a guaranteed fare. So that'll be cheapest in that range. If you want to actually pick your cabin, and you might want to do this if you want to think about um, noise or stability. So midship is the most stable place on a cruise ship, but it will be the most expensive. The front of the ship is called the bow, and the aft of the ship um, is the back of the ship. So those places are less stable if you think about... Um, It'd be in a seesaw, I suppose. Seesaw, yeah. exactly, the most stable parts in the middle. So the cheapest cabins are going to be at either end. Um, you might also want to think about what's above and below the cabin. So if you've got the theatre or a music venue, it could be noisy. So you might want to look at accommodation where you've just got cabins above and below you. And I guess also uh, some cabins come listed with obstructive views mm -hmm. uh, and that could also help uh, reduce the price of any cabins that you choose. And there's plenty out there. But there are also other places you can do research, can't there, on, on cabins and types of cabins, etc. Absolutely. So one really good place is YouTube. So you've got channels such as us. Um, we actually follow people like Emma Cruises, Ben and David, um, Don's Family Vacations, um, Tips for Travellers, Gary Benbridge. So there's a whole host of cruise vloggers out there. So perhaps have a look at their videos because you'll see videos of the ship, the um, ports and the cruise line itself. So that will give you a good idea. You might want to have a look at some websites. So there's Cruise Critic where people sort of view and cr critic, critique a cruise line or a particular ship. Um, 
There are also Facebook pages for every single cruise line. And, and every single cruise, and I every single, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's event pages for cruises. So the only thing I would say is don't be too hung up on some of those negative uh, reviews because they are people's opinions. And they actually, I think you should actually try it out yourself. But you will get a good idea about that particular cruise ship, cruise line and that location as well. Um, you might want to look at particular cabins. And if you go to cruisedeckplan.com, there will be a... Um, a a plan. plan. There'll be a plan of the, the layout of each of the floors on the ships. Exactly. And give you an idea as to where certain decks are. And on those plans, you will also find on some of the cabins, actual cabin tours and videos. So you can actually look around those cabins. So well worth, mm. well worth the effort. Definitely. Okay. So having uh, identified the type of cruise and the cruise line we want to go on, then... What sort of things do people need to consider about packing? Okay, so you just think what you need to take with you. So first of all, in terms of clothes, think about something that's suited to the destination you're going to. So for example, we went to the fjords in Alaska and we mm. needed lots of layers, rain, weather gear, um, footwear for going on undulating, undul undulating. undulating yeah, terrain. Undulating. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because... Uh, that was a lot of granite and it was very cold and wet and it was obviously very slippery at that, at that particular time. Exactly. So on the ship itself, it's just very casual during the day. You might want swimwear if you're going to sunbathe or go in the pool. And then nighttime, depending on the cruise line, there will be some sort of formal dress. So on something like Cunard, women would be expected to wear a cocktail dress, perhaps a long gown, and men would be expected to wear a suit, perhaps a tuxedo. But on other cruise lines, a little bit more relaxed. Um, but there is generally sort of smart, casual for most evenings and then there might be a celebration night where the you dress a little bit little bit fancier i call it so would you recommend taking an outfit or a change of clothes for every day or well you might not have enough luggage allowance for that so if you're flying you're only going to have a certain amount of suitcase if you're going from a port so for example if we go from southampton we can take as many suitcases as we want up to 23 kilograms but we can have as much as we want but you could think are there washing facilities on the cruise ship so you don't need to take something for every day you can just wash your clothes as you go along and that's something we've learned along the way is layers isn't it absolutely absolutely particularly in the evening you might it can be a little bit cold with the air conditioning even in a hot climate so you might want to take ladies might want to take a, a shawl or a jacket to wear maybe in the theatre okay so that's clothing uh what about anything else such as alcohol maybe well or? some cruise lines allow you to take some alcohol aboard so it saves you actually buying drinks so check on the cruise line and you might be able to take maybe one liter each onto the cabin perhaps a bottle of wine or spirits something like that right okay what else then uh well we like to have a nice neat and tidy cabin so i use magnets on the walls because the walls are made of metal and that means you can hang up your cruise planner, keep them out of the way, but also visible. Um, you can hang up perhaps light handbags. Um, if your wardrobes aren't that tall, and that is the case with the new P&O Iona and Avia, mm -hmm. you might want to hang some tall, long garments on a uh, magnet. Okay, think other things thinking about taking. Um, in terms of toiletries, you will always have shower gel, soap, shampoo provided. Um, shampoo and body lotion, sometimes you have to ask for it. For that it's not always included but if you have particular um, needs for your sort of toiletries then then perhaps bring your own I would also say take a medical kit with you you never know when you might need um, sort of some pain relief or plasters and although you can purchase things on board they are going to be much more expensive and I would suggest particularly if it's your first time cruising take some sickness tablets you're not sure how you're going to, to cope with the um, particular weather because it can suddenly change or maybe wear some C bands and I would say if you have prescribed medication, do take enough to cover in case there's some delays and you don't get home as soon as you think. OK, so uh, the next area to cover is what is actually included in a uh, gen generic fare when you're buying a cruise. OK, so you would always have food covered in the fare. So that will often be a buffet where you just turn up and help yourself to a whole range of foods. Then there's main dining room or MDR, where you sit down at a table and you choose off a menu and a waiter comes and brings you your food. And then you've got quick serve, which is um, things like pa pasta, pizza, um, chips, something like that. So it's very quick and easy to get. And they will all cover 
dietary requirements so you know, don't be worried about the range of food most cruise ships now cater for for non-meat eaters and if you have an intolerance or an, an allergy then do let the the restaurants know and they will take that into account if you want to pay a little bit extra there are speciality restaurants where you can um, pay a bit extra but get a like a higher higher level of food and, and service yeah and those speciality restaurants aren't astronomically uh, expensive they're they're very reasonable uh, so they're well worth a look if you just want to have a special evening out uh, and uh, try something different. Mm. Okay, so that's food. What about the, the all too common question about drinks? Yeah, drinks. So you will always get juices, tea, coffee available at breakfast time. And then for lunch and for your evening meal, you will have water, sort of tap water included. Then if you want to have extra drinks, then you choose off a menu, a bit like a pub menu. So there's lots of different choices, whether it be wines, cocktails, spirits, and all different range of prices and quality. Now, you will have an option of taking a drinks package if you want to, but the value of that will depend on what you, how much you drink and what's included in the package. So we will include in the description below the link to Cruise Mummy, who's done a bit of a... Um, a, a sort of chart really about how much you might drink and the type of drinks for each cruise line to see if it's worth the value of getting the, the, the drinks package or not. Yeah, it's essentially a cost calculator, so based on the number of drinks, mm -hmm. it's fantastic mm -hmm. and really worth looking into. Okay, so that's the food and the drinks covered. Uh, what about other things such as entertainment? Yeah, so what you want to do on the cruise ship is, is the big thing here. So um, there will always be a theatre on the cruise ship where you will see some sort of show, whether it be music, dancing comedian a magician that sort of thing there will be venues where there'll be music playing um there will be guest speakers perhaps doing um something to do with the area you're in so when we went to alaska there was a speaker talking all about nature and wildlife around local experts exactly and they're very interesting as well exactly okay there will always be quizzes on a cruise ship they're quite known for, for having lots of quizzes and different venues and different themes so whether it be sports music particular decades so they're usually really fun to join in yeah I've no doubt if you're a quiz fan that you could probably find at least four or five quizzes a day on the ship and keep yourself busy. Exactly. So there's always something to do. Yeah, there, so that's there? keeping your brain busy. So mm. what about something to burn off the calories? Mm -hmm. So most cruise ships have a gym and they're really good quality gyms as well. So you might want to do a bit of walking or a bit of running. Um, you've got weight machines, all sorts of different things. There'll also be some sort of fitness classes. Um, if you like something really fun, you might want a bit of line dancing. Um, you don't need partner for that sort of thing, so it's, it really is great fun. Um, and sometimes sort of fit steps or ballroom dancing. So I did um, line dancing. Yeah, no, I did um, belly dancing on oh. one cruise. That was really that was something different and really fun. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And the, most cruise ships also have a casino if that's the sort of thing you like. Obviously, you pay to play the games, but it is something for you to do. Okay, so that is entertainment. Is there anything else that is covered in the fairs? Absolutely. So one of the main reasons we cruise is actually going to different ports. So there's nothing like waking up every day at a different location. So what's covered in the cruise fair is the fees to stop at the ports, the port fees. So there's a pilot that get, comes on board the ship before it gets to the port to mm -hmm. help with mm -hmm. the mooring process very last part of it and also when it leaves the port the pilot jumps on then so all those sort of costs are included in it um, other things to think about are tips or gratuities mm -hmm. so with UK based cruises they are included in the fare um, but perhaps with a uh, different cruise lines from different different countries it might be separate so do look into that but whatever method there is if you want to tip a particular crew member then definitely that is encouraged they work really hard but the overall tips are given across all the crew that the back, back staff that you actually never see yeah and that's the one thing if you're tipping someone you see is that the put the poor people in the bowels yeah. of the ship doing the all the engineering mm -hmm. and everything else don't get to get a part of it so i think yeah. gratuities up front i think are Definitely. really good yeah so other thing you need to take into account um around the wi-fi now this isn't included in the fare but you can pay extra for it and i would say please 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 put your phone into airplane mode when you get on board and it leaves the port because other t otherwise it will pick up the maritime um, network and that will cost an absolute fortune so if you want to use your phone you need to use it um, then then perhaps buy one of the um, wi-fi packages but overall so that the extra things we've spoken about sort of the the drinks package 
the Wi-Fi, some of the speciality dining, all of that. Do think, do look and see if there's um, an overall package that covers all of that. It might be cheaper than doing it separately. So um, one example of that is Princess, and that's much better value to, to look at their package. OK, so with regards to documentation, people often get confused about what it is they will need when going on a cruise. So what sort of things do people need to consider? OK, well, you're going to need a valid passport if you're going to another country. So do look at the expiry date on your passport. Depending on which country you're going to, you will need up to six months validity on that passport. So do check out the website, sort of the travel website for the country you're going to, to make sure that your passport is still valid. OK, any visas? So that is that dependent on the sort of countries you're going to? Absolutely. Or? And this is regardless of whether it's a cruise or whether you're going to another country. So if you go to the United States from outside of that area, you need an ESTA. If we're going to Canada, you need an ETA. And if you're going to the Caribbean, particularly Barbados, they have their own immigration form. So again, the cruise line will help support you and remind you of the certain things that you need. But you do need those documents in place before you cruise. And talking of documentation, this next one, I think, uh, when you're going off the ship at ports, I think it's also important because it's almost caught us out, isn't it? Exactly. So you do need some form of photo ID to take with you. So it doesn't necessarily need to be your passport. You might not feel so comfortable taking it off the ship. But in the UK, we have the driving license that has our photo on it. So when you go through... Um, the border security so this isn't the cruise ship staff this is the security in that country before you board they may want to check that you are who you say you are and you're valid to go on board again yeah because one thing just to quickly cover is that we weren't we didn't realize until we first went on a cruise is that you essentially get signed off the ship and then back on the ship as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. so there's security at every step so having that photo id is very important mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, other documentation, I guess, is insurance. I Absolutely. Think. Yeah. I mean, this goes for when you go on any holiday, but particularly with a cruise. Think about it. You're in the middle of the ocean. If something happens to you and you need to be taken off the ship because it's only basic medical cover on the ship, you may need to um, have a backup plan there because somebody's going to take you off the ship and how are you going to pay for that? So that's insurance that covers cruises. So make sure it specifically covers cruises. Now, something extra that you can take out is perhaps missed ports mm. because if you don't um, stop at a cruise port for whatever reason you can claim back on your insurance if you have that extra cover it's not standard yeah that's something well worth looking into especially if you're going somewhere like the fjords where the weather has a great impact as to whether or not ships can get into port so it'd be well worth looking into definitely and if you're making lots of trips sort of other holidays or cruises throughout the year it might be better value to take out an annual policy rather than an individual one for each trip but also what I would say is do declare any known medical conditions because if you don't do so and you need to make a claim because of that condition, it may be invalid. OK, so we've covered sorting the cruise out, finding the cruise, your documentation, what's uncovered in the fares, etc. So in preparation for the day of the cruise, what sort of things do people need to get ready? OK, so there'll be some sort of online check-in that you'll need to do on the cruise line um, sort of web portal. So that will be things like confirming your passport number, an emergency contact. Sometimes you put your insurance details there. You might need to upload a photograph. Also um, put a some sort of credit or debit card onto your account to cover any costs, that, things that you might be purchasing. So that's something you need to do in advance. Um, you'll need to print off all your boarding documents mm -hmm. ready. I mean, you can have them on your mobile phone, but sometimes it's handy to have them um, in your hand to hand over so somebody can look at much, much, much easier. Um, and the other thing is some luggage labels. So when you leave your um, suitcase before you get on the ship, you need to attach a label which shows the cabin that you're in. Now, you can print them off, but they're bits of paper. So we've purchased some plastic holders from, from Amazon um, and it just sort of protects it from water and the elements because your luggage might be outside for some time. Okay, well, talking about the luggage labels and you know, and then luggage itself, when we're actually, when people actually get to the port, what sort of things that can they expect to happen and the processes by which they go through? Okay, so the first thing is you're given a time to turn up at the cruise port, and do stick to that. Mm. They can't have the whole um, sort of passengers on the ship arriving at the one time, so it's a staggered process. So do turn up at the time you're given to make it a much smoother process. So the first thing you'll do is you'll hand over your luggage. And because you've got your room number on it, it will actually end up in your room um, a short time after you get on board the ship. 
Um, then at the cruise terminal, you'll need to sort of do the sort of next bit of the check in there. So it might be a bit of a health questionnaire that you'll need to do. Um, they'll just check sort of various documents. Um, sometimes you're handed over the cruise card, which is your door key or some sort of wearable device. You're handed it over there and then at the port or it might be waiting for you outside your room. Um, then you'll go through sort of airport style um, security so a scanner for your bags and one that you walk through just to make sure you're not taking on board anything that's prohibited so do check again on the cruise line things that you're not allowed to take such as sort of irons obviously sort of weapons anything like that so they will be making sure that nothing gets on board that shouldn't be yeah that was one of the, fir- the, the things that actually struck me on the first cruise mm. we went is it is very much like airport style security yeah. and I guess it makes sense but yeah always be prepared for that um, once you get on the ship, something else that you will need to do before the ship actually departs is the muster drill. Mm. And that's that's just an emergency drill or, or uh, so that everyone knows what to do in emergency, whether life, life SR, etc., etc. A lot of it's done on the phone now. Uh, previously, it would, everyone would be called to certain points. You do have to go to your registered point and you'll be told what your registered point is uh, in order to just get yourself ticked off and once that's happened and everyone's done it then the ship will sail if there are still people that haven't done it have gone to the bars already the ship will not sail and the captain will keep calling their names out until they mm. go so make sure it's one of the first things it takes about 30 seconds so it's not, not too much of a problem no. okay so what other so that's it you're on board the ship the ship embarks what can people expect for say so i guess port days maybe yeah, well, you'd arrive at port. Yeah, so port days are really, you know, the reason why we cruise, as we said before. So um, what will happen is that you're told the night before what time the cruise ship will arrive at port. It doesn't mean you can get off at that time. That will be a separate time. So once the gangway is secured, you'll be allowed off the cruise ship. And then you can either just get off and wander around that location yourself. You could do an organised tour that might be from the cruise line or it could be an independent one. But what I would say is make sure you are back in time. You'll be told the time that the cruise ship um, departs and you'll be given a time when you need to be back on board. So they call it back on board time. So if you're doing a a, a cruise excursion from the cruise line itself, if there's a delay, the cruise ship will not leave without you. But if it's a private one and you're not back, goodbye, off the cruise ship will be going. And that does happen. That, yeah. that that happens quite a bit. Is that people have booked their own excursions, and for whatever reason, there's been a traffic jam or something along those lines. The ship will go without you, uh, and that's one of the reasons why you also you need to take your passports or photo ID off just in case you need to to fly somewhere to catch up. Absolutely. But you don't have to get off the ship on a port day. You could choose to stay on board and it could be nice and quiet. There might be some deals in the spa that are really worth sort of staying on board for. So it's really entirely up to you. So um, some people just get on a hop on, hop off bus and just explore the area. So you can do as much or as little as you want. So that's port days then. So what are sea days like on the ship and what can people expect to uh, to be going on in the ship on sea okay. days? So a sea day is usually a day when the ship is just sailing so it's on the way to the furthest destination on the itinerary so it's a chance for you to explore the ship just relax join in there's a lot more activities on a sea day and on a sea day it's often the day that the more formal night takes place you've got lots of time to get yourself all glamorous and and sorted out so yeah sea days are really good so you can just say do as much again or as little as you want now you cover formal night now uh, there's a formal night is one of these things where people are a bit concerned about the formality of it. Mm. Should they be concerned? No, there will always be a location on the cruise ship that evening that you can go to, whether you're wearing your shorts or whether you're all glammed up, but it may not be the main dining room. It might not be the dining room of your choice where the full meal is, the fancy meal. So just be prepared. If you don't really want to dress up, there will be something for you to eat. You'll just go to the buffet that night. Yeah, it's not as if you're confined to your cabin and you're not allowed out. No. Um, yeah, you can just go. It just means that there's a certain dress code for the main dining room. And if you don't want to do it, just don't do it. There are plenty of places elsewhere you can eat, relax and enjoy yourself. So it's not something to get hung up about. No, but if you like to dress up, that's great. <laughs> okay, so I think that's pretty much life on board the ship mm. as it's going. Then, obviously, you've got the... The sad part is about disembarkation and mm. the process by which we all then get off the ship. So maybe you could talk us through what happens there. Yeah, so what happens then is 
a couple of days before the end of the cruise, you'll have a sheet of paper that's left in your cabin to tell you the time that they're giving to you to disembark. So a bit like when you get on board, they're not going to let everybody off at the same time. So you're given a staggered time. Um, if it doesn't suit because you've got to get a plane, there is some flexibility with that. Um, and that goes for people who want their luggage taken off for them. So if you want to carry your own luggage, and we're talking about the big suitcase here, if you literally want to carry that off yourself, there will be a time that they'll say that you're allowed to get off and it'll be much earlier. So if you really have to rush off, but you do have to carry it yourself. Now, if the, your luggage is taken off for you, you will find it in a zoned area at the port when you get off. It really is easy. I mean, you get there and there's lots and lots of suitcases, but you're given either a colour or a number or a letter or something and you will find your suitcase. Yeah, it. essentially when you get off the ship, it's not, uh, you know, you're off the going onto the port and you're off all lot going in your different directions. You get funnelled through uh, the terminal and then you will find your luggage there. So there you have it. There are little tips and tricks and insights into what goes on in booking undertaking a cruise uh, we hope you found it interesting if you have already been on a cruise and have anything else to add mm. please do so in the comments below we love it when people comment on our videos i'm sure we've missed loads of things i'm sure we've included things that you didn't even consider um but yeah please do so please leave a comment and if you haven't already please subscribe it really helps us and uh makes these worthwhile doing don't they absolutely if you've got any questions because we haven't answered we haven't been able to answer in this short time all, all that that is entailed please do put any questions in the comments and we will answer them okay and obviously we've got lot, lots more uh, videos already on the channel so if you haven't done so please feel free to have a look around but until then we'll see you in the next one bye for now